Nicola Markinson is Global Head of Economics at Societe Generale. She joins me in the studio now. Nicola, I actually wanted to speak about INSEE's predictions on France. Uh, and they're saying that, well, we're going to see the economy effectively contracting, shrinking in the next couple of quarters. And I think, well, I mean, if you look at their comments, the really worrying thing about this is the fact that corporate spending, which had been driving the recovery in that country up till now, is effectively going to dry up, they say. Well, I think this is exactly what we're seeing, is that the price tag of keeping the euro area together is increasingly looking towards recession. And this is not just the case, as we've seen from the INSEE uh, comments this morning. This is true for the euro area as a whole, where we predict a recession in the first half of next year. And the longer it takes to get some quick moves on the debt crisis, the longer the financial stress will persist and the deeper that recession will be for the euro area. So the initial price tag of the muddle through strategy is very much a recession. Are you speaking about borrowing costs, the, 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 the nervousness that we've seen in the bond markets? It's everything added up together. It's the cost of borrowing for sovereigns, it's the cost of borrowing for corporates, it's the cost of funding for bank, it's the credit conditions, it's the broader confidence from consumers and business managers. And all of that begins to bite. And this is the thing about confidence, be it that of financial markets or business managers, once you start to lose it and everyone becomes fearful, it takes an awful long time to build back up. Okay, speaking of stresses in funding markets, I suppose we've seen the ECB taking some steps in this respect, to taking measures to boost liquidity, if you like. Is that going to have much of an impact on lending? Will it create more, enough assurance to prevent some sort of funding drought? It will, and I think this is the point. When we look at the euro area today, the ECB is funding the banks acting as the, last res lender, the, the lender of last resort to the banking sector. At the same time, there are enough mechanisms in place if a sovereign runs into trouble to help on the funding. And that means that any decision to put an end to the euro area, the euro breakup scenario, becomes a political decision rather than a market accident that triggers such an event. But the markets are worried about precisely that, the fact that there isn't enough financing on the table if a sovereign were to get into trouble. Well, I think that's where we have to look at the different horizons, because typically what we're looking at in the markets is we're thinking Italy and Spain combined have almost a trillion euro of funding needs over the next three years. And you're absolutely right. When we look at the, the pool of money available today, it's not enough to cover that amount over three years. But if within the next couple of months there is a need for a country to get some emergency help somewhere, the IMF has the facilities to lend, the EFSF does have the facilities in the short term to bridge that gap. And keep in mind that one of the things for the summit was actually to leave the door open. Now what I'm saying is it's a long hard grind, it's a political decision, and what it depends on ultimately is the fiscally strong countries will to help the fiscally weaker countries, and those fiscally weaker countries yeah. will to sign up to that austerity. And well, we've, seen, we've already seen signs of, of the fiscally weak countries signing up to austerity, haven't we? But I suppose when you look at the EU summit, I know that you're saying when you look at all the little bits and pieces, it actually amounts to a significant step on, on the road to progress. But I suppose there are many people saying that ultimately this summit did nothing to resolve the key issue in this region, which is all about divergence, is the fact that you have these, these weak southern European countries versus a large surplus country like Germany, and, and that imbalance is very much still there. Well, I think the problem with that imbalance is it never will be fixed overnight. But when we look at what the summits have been doing and we look at everything that's been said, there has actually been a lot of focus on things like wage restraint, how to improve the competitiveness. It's not the exciting headline, you know, sort of sensational news, but when you go back and you look at all the different summits on economic governance, it's all in there. It'll take so a decade to get a there. Decade, but, so, but I mean, you see, you, you see a credible strategy for growth emerge from the summit? You, no, there's not no. a growth strategy per se. What there is is there's a strategy to bring down public debt, which we know is a positive for growth in the long term. There is a strategy being formulated on how to put in place structural reforms, labor market reform, pension reform, product market reform. But are they reform. taking into account the impact of that reform, that austerity on growth? Well, I think this is it. The, 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 the feeling is that it's quite all right if we have to go through a prolonged period of weaker growth to get to that target. So you can think of Europe as having this U shape where we're now heading into recession. Mm. That recession could potentially become very deep and then we'll work our way through it. And this is very much what Germany itself did, this long, hard grind. That's the German contract, and if they don't want to be part of that, I don't think we'll, we'll 
move ahead. Well, you know, Michael, I just want to take a quick look at your top three themes, the yes. three big things that you're watching as we go into 2012. And you're seeing the financial stress stemming from the debt crisis feeding into the real economy. We've been speaking about that. You're also keeping a watchful eye on the Chinese banking industry. And perhaps not surprisingly, U.S. fiscal policy right there amongst your concerns. So let's just let me ask you then about the U.S. How confident are you that we will see some sort of easing in the political deadlock in Washington when it comes to, well, essentially addressing fiscal policy? Well, I, I think what we will see is we will see the payroll tax cuts go through this year. And that means that the U.S. should be on track to have growth of about 1.4 percent on our forecast for 2012. What we, what we will probably not see, in our opinion, is a continuation of that again in 2013, which is why, looking ahead to that horizon, we have quite a weak growth forecast for the U.S. of just under 2 percent. And I think that's really going to be the quick, big question for 2012, is what kind of configuration will we have after the presidential election? And we believe that it's likely that we won't have a majority in all three, i.e. President, House and Senate, and that means that this fiscal debate in the U.S. will continue.